Howdy folks, it's Tall Turtle here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And before I even tell you what we're doing today, I'm going to ask you a question right out of the gate. I hope it doesn't backfire on me, but I've been wanting to ask this for a really long time. And that is, why do you watch my videos? And it's a serious question. I'm genuinely curious. Um, at the time of this recording, we have 1,231 subscribers. I get about three new subscribers every single day. I don't know where they're coming from, but I think that's awesome. I have about 90 of you who watch videos every video every day. About 90 of you watch every single video. Of course, when I have like a tutorial or something very specific or a clickbaity type video, then I get thousands of views, but that's not my style to do that. So. That's awesome and everything, but I value my regular returning viewers the most. So that would be 90 of you. So why do 90 of you watch my videos every single day? Is it, I'm not asking because of like lack of self-confidence or insecurity. I'm just literally generally asking. Um, is it because you learn something new, even if it's not a tutorial? Something you can apply to your own sim hobby? Is it because I give you ideas? Is it because you yourself don't have a simulator, either because of the computer requirements or other hobbies or something? Um, maybe that's what it is. Is it because um, you just like the company of having me talk in the background? Story time stuff? Um, my two most popular comments, one is... I like listening to your voice, which I can't say I'm listening to myself, but that's normal, I think. The other one is, why don't you have way more subscribers, which is completely flattering and everything. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm not doing it for the subscribers. I like getting subscribers. It makes me feel good. I like when I get a bunch of comments and views. It makes me feel good. But that's not why I do it. So I'm just curious. Why do you watch? I know when I watch people, um, for me, I just like listening to people talk about them, their lives and stuff it's just interesting to me i'll have videos on in the background while i'm doing mundane things you know whatever like whatever it is that i'm doing i just like listening to them talk um, i've told you before how i used to watch this lady cross stitch for an hour and 20 minutes every single day cross stitching she didn't talk about cross stitching she talked about herself and i loved it she lives in the middle of nowhere colorado very interesting person um a long time ago i used to watch this lady it was basically like her YouTube was her diary. And she was on a men's hockey team. The only woman. And the stories she had to tell were things I never would have thought of. And I thought it was fascinating. Unfortunately, she stopped uploading years ago. So that's why I watch videos. I watch flights and videos of other people. Because I'll learn something, right? Even if it's not a tutorial, I'll learn something. I'm like, hey, I never thought of that before. And then I'll do more research on it. Um, that's why I watch videos. Why do I make videos? Um, I am confident in that it's not an ego thing. It's not an attention, attention thing. It's just my hobby and my social outlet, really, between the discords and the comment sections and researching things. It's my social outlet. I love it. Um, I love doing Flight Simulator first and foremost. It's my biggest hobby, obviously, outside of music, which music is like a hobby job, so... Outside of that, the music thing. Flight Simulator is my biggest hobby, obviously. I can never get enough of it. I never get sick of it. And then I love making videos. I love editing. I love making, when I say stupid things and make stupid screw-ups, I like editing it so you can't tell. Um, I just love making the videos, even if nobody watches them. So I'm not doing it for attention. I'm confident in that. I'm not doing it for an ego boost. I've been accused before of doing it for my own self-worth and that I'm confident to say that's not true. I just enjoy doing it. If people watch, awesome. If a bunch of people watch, it feels good. If nobody watches, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I'll still do it. So why do you watch my videos? I've been wanting to ask that for a long time, but I felt like it could backfire on me, but I'm confident enough now that whatever people say, I'm just really curious. Um, that follow-up question then, do you like the story time? I used to do a lot of story time, but then I stopped doing story time. Um, I think people like it. In fact, 
I recently had a very long video release in the title said massive story time that thing got so many views right out of the gate like I completely was like double my normal views or something like the day I released it and it said massive story time so apparently people like story time I know I do um and other people I like listening to story time so I don't know I mean I want to keep doing what I'm doing the way I'm doing it based on how I feel like doing it that day but why do you why do you watch I'm just curious I think I have enough regular viewers now that I can ask that and not get like just one response. So if you've never commented before, now's your chance to comment. Now, you know, just let me know. I'm just curious. And then, you know, to piggyback on that, is there something you want to see more of? Um, I know a lot of people ask me to do more tutorials and things, um, but there are already thousands, well, probably hundreds, but it seems like thousands of people who already do tutorials, but maybe you like my style or something. I guess I could start doing more tutorials, I guess. Um, those videos are very popular, but like I said, with hundreds of people doing them, I feel like it's beating a dead horse. But I guess if you want me to, I will. Um, I used to get one subscriber request almost every day. I haven't had any subscriber requests in a long time. Well, yeah, I guess I did, but I took, I did it right away. So subscriber requests, fire them at, fire them at me. And there you go. So there's your long introduction. Oh my gosh, that was seven minutes long. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I've been wanting to ask that for a really long time. So there you go. There's the big question. Sorry about my raspy voice. I'm doing this flight before work. It's like 5.30 in the morning. And I want to get it done before work. Because I've been craving this flight for a long time. And um, I don't know I'm going to be able to fly again. Because of a busy couple weekends and days coming up. So anyway, what are we doing? We're going to be doing an Australian cross country. I know, back to Australia. I kind of get these ideas where I'll fly somewhere and like it, and they just do a bunch of flights there. So we're taking off at Ayers Rock, but we're not going to go look at it or anything. Although I do have a flight planned where we're going to land on it, but that's not what we're doing today. Today we are going to fly north to Argyle. Yep, two hours in this thing, 500 and some nautical miles. Um, which means we have to get going so I get done before work. But World Brothers turned on while it was... It said it was cloudy, and it said that winds were coming from 134 degrees. So we'll see what happens when we start up the computers here. Because it's not cloudy. And I can't see the windsock. So, whatever. I'm glad it's not cloudy right now, because I wanted real world weather, and I want to see the terrain change from brown to, or from red to green. But I'm kind of confused where the clouds went. But anyway, um, anyway, that's simple setup, right? That's what we're doing. Australian cross country, Ayers Rock to Argyle in the TBM 930, which was my favorite plane, but I haven't flown in a while. And um, it's a long flight. So let's get going. I had more to say and I forgot. See, when I rehearse my intros and then I go to say them, I can't remember if I said something or not because I rehearsed it so many times and I screw up. So I have to stop rehearsing. I also probably should clear out my voice before I start talking this early in the morning. All right, fueling passengers. Um. Let's see, I think it's going to be a date. I think it's going to be a... Oh, I just hit a bunch of zeros. It's going to be a date. Um, yeah. Yep. There you go. Date. No children. Um, I guess we're going to stay in a hotel. So let's bring... Let's bring some baggage with, I guess. Can you tell which suitcase is mine and which is my wife's? Fuel, I'm sure we have more than enough fuel, but I'm just going to crank it up anyway. There we go. All right, what else are we doing here? Um, Man, it's been a long time since I've flown this thing. Crash lever up, it says. Source battery. Source to bat, where is it? There we go. Generator to main. Uh-huh. Panel lights on. If we need them, we don't really need them. It's bright daylight. It's like 10 in the morning sim time. Cabin and access lights on. Start the MDF, which is your multi-function display. There we go. And... Anything we need to know yet? I don't think so. Oh, I forgot. Well, I'll get to the flight plan part when we get to the flight plan. De-ice test lights. De-ice okay. test lights. Where are they? Right there? Yep. Landing gear test light. Yep, can barely tell with the sun glare. 
Check fuel quantity. We just did that. But if you want to check on here, where is it on this one? Why can't I find it? Volts, amps, oil. Right here in the middle. I mean, just blind, I guess. Strobe lights can come on. There you go. Yoke conditioners. Do I have a yoke thing? Full. Ignition auto. Already is. Auxiliary boost pump on. There we go. Starter on. Turns off automatically, it says. Wait for the engines to stabilize. Nothing starting up. I guess they are. Why do I not trust this? Looks like everything is working. Okay. Alright, yeah, everything's in the green and climbing. Alright, feather throttle twice. I probably should have been looking at my D when I did that, huh? There we go. Um, auxiliary boost pump to auto. Fuel select confirm auto. Is that auto? Now it's on auto. Huh. Okay. Um, shift test. Oh yeah, so what you do is you come down here and see how it's on the left tank. You come up here and it should shift automatically. Does it. Now it's on the right tank. See, that keeps it balanced. AP trims on. I used to forget this all the time because I didn't know what it meant. So AP trims on. That's for autopilot. Confirm generators on main. It is bleed to auto. Bleed to auto under primary flight display. Bleed auto. AC fan and temperature. Let's um crank up the heat. It's super early in the morning. Oxygen on above the starters. Oxygen on. De-ice pedal heat as needed. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pedo heat, uh-huh. Uh, yep, yep. Case run into wind inertia separator. Where do we turn that on? Not Taui Taxi. That's this. Okie dokie. Um, mess with our settings on our primary flight display. Wind. Um, other PDF settings? Wind. I love my wind. Okay. Real world weather's on, 130, 130 degrees at 7 knots. It's just missing the clouds, I guess. Or maybe it updated and there are no clouds. I don't know. Alrighty, um, can we turn that off? I hate that thing. No, not that. That was fine. It's the map I hate. Insert. Um. I don't know, we can change that to FMS while we're at it. Traffic insert, no. Map settings, can't do anything. Okay, so I can change the range, but it's not going to go away. That's fine. Okay, there's our first waypoint. All right, flight plan and radio. So flight plan, first of all, do I have my presets? Well, okay, so my flight plan, how do I zoom out of this thing? Flight plan, I'm messing with my MDF, so I know boost pop. Um, what is a flight plan? Very simple, we're just going to head north. The approach, though, for this flight, I did pre-select an approach based on the weather that the sim was giving me. So you can't see it now, but basically we're going to go over the lake and have a nice gradual U-turn onto runway, what was it? I can't remember what the runway was. It was just most complimentary to the wind. Why can't you remember the runway? Anyway, it's from the northern point going south. Whatever runway number that is, we'll figure out together when we get there. Super, super simple. We're going to fly at 19,000 feet. And we'll just play with ATC. And like I said in the previous video, we're just going to flirt with ATC. Why not? It is IFR. I, in case it's not obvious, just because I've been enjoying this IFR stuff. Um, so we're just going to do another IFR flight. Very simple. I completely screwed up how I described the flight plan, but it, it's super simple. Super simple one. Um, the only difference is I pre-selected our approach based on weather. Is that going to be the active runway when we get there? Doesn't matter. We're doing the approach based on weather, not active runway, because the ATC screws that up a lot. Okie dokie. Um, oh yes, the winds are coming from 139. So the winds are coming from here. So this is the runway we want. Hopefully that's the active one. 
We'll find out. Okay, that is it. So easy. I already have the FMS going there. Um, is there an ATIS? Let's see. ATIS? There is. Holy crap, there's an ATIS. Let's see what it says. If it's useful. Yankee Alpha, Yankee Echo Airport, information whiskey, 2200 Zulu. Wind 135 at 12. Visibility, 6. Sky condition, few clouds at 1100 feet, few clouds at 4200 feet, few clouds at 12300 feet. Temperature, 29er. Dew point, 10. Altimeter, and altimeter, that's what we want. Hit B on the. Visual runway, one tree, in use. Hey, it's using the right Landing runway. runway one tree. Nice. DSR, okay, aircraft, good. Um, Alright, so we got All a barometer set. And, and let's tune the center and request our clearance. And then we'll move on with our startup procedure Melbourne here. Center Turtles of Tango Sierra 4105 ready to copy IFR clearance to Yankee Alpha Romeo Golf. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105 is cleared to Yankee Alfa Romeo Golf Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Departure frequency is 121.85 squawk 6462. Clearance void 30 minutes from now. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105 cleared to Yankee Alfa Romeo Golf Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Departure is 121.85, squawk 6462. Clearance void, 30 minutes from now. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105, read back correct. Alright, so they want us to go to 12,000 feet right out of the gate. So that's what we're going to do here is go up to 12,000 feet. 12,000. There is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ba -do -do -do. Remember that song? Alright, so we're going to do flight directors. And we're going to do vertical speed. I think this one can go pretty steep. Let's just crank this thing up. 1900 feet per minute. And we're going to use nav. Um, we Two options. We can take off this way, which we're going to hand fly back to the route. Or we can engage autopilot at the end of the runway and see if it'll get us there. Let's try that. As soon as we take off, five seconds later we'll engage autopilot. We'll see if it'll get us there. If not, we'll hand fly. We'll kill autopilot, hand fly, and go there. So easy that is. Alrighty, um, nav source, we did that already. Speed bugs to all. There's a thing here if you go. Speed bugs. All on. Home. And that's it. Okie dokie. We could look at flight plan here. I'm afraid this is going to make me crash. Sometimes it makes you crash. You got to be careful. I mean, I already talked about all that. Um, anything else we need to do? Timers. Start the timer a little bit. Okay. Um, ready to taxi. So we're going to come down here and turn on inertia separator. That's in case there's ice on the way up. Taxi lights on. Where are you? There we go. Pulse light on. Props forward, flaps down, and begin taxi. So we're going to radio here that we're going to announce our taxi. Yankee Alpha, Yankee and Echo, we're going to run 13, which is based on the way we're facing. It's going to be the runway to our left, right here. So we're going to turn this way and try to taxi through somehow. Turn right, left, right, left. Right, left, I guess? I don't know. Let's see here. Parking brake off. And. Keep going. Come on. Gonna go? There we go. Had to brake free, I guess. Alright, so we're gonna go right. Oh, we do get a taxi ribbon. Okay. We will um, use it, I guess. And then, like usual, if it stays on after we take off, then we'll just kill it. So, I'm going to taxi out, rest my voice for a minute, and I'll see you at the end of this runway. We're still taxiing, but we're going to go on to the um, runway now. So let's get our nav lights and our landing lights on. Whoops. And continue our taxi. The thing that's confusing me is runway 13 is to the left, obviously, because it faces 130 degrees. But 
it says 31 on the little taxi ribbon destination thing. I'll show you here once I get around this corner. I'm going kind of fast to make a turn. See that? 31. Isn't that weird? I don't understand why. I should look that up. Maybe it's a bug or something, or maybe I'm misunderstanding. But that's runway 13. So why does it have the opposite runway? I don't know. I'm not going to do the whole zigzag taxi thing that wants us to do. We are just going to um, continue our back taxi because it adds so much time to do it their way sometimes. All right, what are we doing here? Um, and the runaway dimmer switch on. Where's my dimmer switch right there? That is so if we crash, people's eyes are adjusted to the outside environment. Landing lights on. Already did that. Lab lights already did that. Confirm flaps. They are. Start the timer on the primary flight display. And start. Does it go up there? Hey, and this one, it goes up there as well. Good. That means we can keep this one up for zooming this. See? There we go. Alrighty, we already have our um, autopilot set. We're going to do autopilot right at the end of the runway, see if it actually works. And take off the gear up, flaps up 115 knots. Alright, parking brake is off. Here we go, we get to stare at the rock for just a second. And then we're going to probably turn to the left, I assume it's going to do. I don't know. Where's my autopilot button anyway? Where is it? Autopilot button is there. Okay, so yaw damper and rotate. Gear up and flaps will come up at 115, which is about there. And autopilot. We're hands free and it's working. Let's see which way it turns us to the left as predicted. So let's look outside while we can because um, we're going to miss this rock here if we don't. There it is. Check that out. We'll get a glimpse of it. So yeah, if you're doing IFR flight, company flight, all that thing, this is how you'd fly, right? You would get everything set up and then end of the runway, you hit autopilot and then you just sit here. Um, so yeah, you engage autopilot and then you just talk to ATC and land. Um, very different from GA VFR flying where you have to do everything manually all the time. But this is awesome. Yes, I have to tune in the center. I'm just enjoying the scenery because this is the scenery simulator, right? I'm just kidding. All right, let's hop inside. We'll come back to that rock in a second. What's what's mad at me? Is it the overspeed ITT? Yes, yeah, ITT. Sorry, I was looking around. There you go. All right, everything's in the green. All right, let's tune in center like we're supposed to and see what they have to tell Mountain us. Mountain Center Turtle Soak Tango Sierra 4105 is at 4,200 feet, climbing 12,000 feet. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105 Melbourne Center, continue as planned. Altimeter 29er, decimal 9er 4. All righty. I'm glad this actually worked. Because we've seen this before, we'll do autopilot and I'll circle around until it finds what it wants, but it worked right out of the gate. Everything is going to swimmingly. Hopefully it remains that way. Um, let's keep it like, eh, let's keep it all the way out until we get somewhere. Hour 16 minutes only. Okay, I was expecting over two hours, so this is good. Um, yeah. All right, what is there to do besides look around? Let's see here. Cruise dimmer switch can come off. Yep, 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 yep. Alrighty. De-ice is needed. Inertia separator off as needed. Um, landing lights off at 10k. And just monitor things. We will have standard barometer at 18k since hopefully we go up to 19k. That's it. So what we're going to do is we are... Whoa, I'm going to explode here. Torque is pretty high. Come on. There we go. Alright. I'm just going to hang out, monitor things at 10,000 feet. Landing lights will come off. Oh my gosh, we're in the red again. At 10,000 feet, landing lights will come off. I'm just going to listen to ATC for an hour and a half. And that is it. Yeah, so we got just still in the red. Come on. There we go. So, yep, you get some sightseeing. And then if anything interesting happens in the meantime... 
I'll come back with some narration. But otherwise, sightseeing, I'm going to do a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. And then top descent, when ATC tells us to come down, we'll reconvene, do the transition and approach together and all that stuff like normal. So enjoy some sightseeing. And um, I'm actually going to turn off landing lights now, even though it's early, because you never get to see me do it. And it's always off camera. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit.
Well, we have clouds. That's awesome. The clouds showed up. And I believe the wind and everything are still correct. All right. So let's, um, let's see what we need to do here. We are 17, 18 minutes out. There is Lake Argyle right there. There's the airport. So the approach we're going to do is come out here and do a nice U-turn onto the runway. Now, I did mention before that I pre-selected that in the flight planning stage based on the weather at the time. So hopefully the weather didn't change and it will still be the best runway for landing and hopefully ATC will get us there and hopefully it's the active runway. We don't have a head-on collision like we have had other times where we select the correct old runway ourselves. I'm looking. Um, of course, this is the air, the wind up here. But I'm assuming it's the same direction on the ground, so that will be correct. This is always opposite. Um, that is always the opposite. So you want to think about it, because this is always broken, that's the direction you want to land. That's the direction of the wind. Hopefully they fix that someday. Otherwise, just hanging in there, checking out the scenery. Let's hop outside together. Um, the scenery did change as I expected it to way back an hour and a half ago. It was that bright red deserty stuff and you could see different train changes hopefully in my editing well that's a nice shot hopefully in my editing i kept some sampling of what the train changes look like from flat and rocky kind of to sand dunes like big sand dunes then we had smaller sand dunes and now we have this stuff i don't know if this is salty stuff or what it is but um it definitely changed as i expected it to i thought it'd be more green up here i don't know why i thought that maybe it'll still be green eventually. I don't know why I thought it turned green, but I did. Um, I did check the train on Sky Vector, and the highest train is 3,000 feet, 2,300 feet, so no big deal. There is the lake there. You can see Lake Argyle, so we're going to go up over the edge of the lake, come back and land right above there. So we're getting closer. It has been a while, though. It has been an hour and 34 minutes. I will zoom this in as we get closer and closer. I'll keep zooming it in. So anyway, I'm just hanging out, waiting for ATC to give instructions. We are only 19,000 feet up, so I can't imagine ATC is going to bring us down anytime soon. In fact, ATC might not even bring us down until it's, like, too late. So let's check the flight plan here. Hopefully this doesn't crash it. Um, does it give us anything? It just says the airport is at 500 feet. Um, 3,400 feet... By the next waypoint, though, we do get that information. All right, so we're shooting for 3,400 feet by the next waypoint, regardless of what ATC says. And we come down to 2390, and then the airport is oh, did I crash it? There we go. There we go. This reason the airport was at 500, I think it said. Yeah. Alrighty, so 34, 23, and then 500. So we want to come down about 6,000 feet. I'm rounding down because we'll have another elevation drop between that one and that one. So let's say we have to come down. Nope, hang on. Oh, what? Are you serious? Nice, just as I was going to do that. Very cool. All right, well, let's bring this down to 6,000 feet. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to bring this down to 3400 instead, which is what I was going to do right on my own. Let's do... Well, we'll do our um, rate of descent in a moment here. Alright, keep speed below 210. Yeah, we'll worry about that when we get closer. Um, we just have to watch for overspeed right now. So, anything else? Nope, our nav, so we should get a glide slope and localizer and everything. This might turn green. Sometimes it turns green. And then when it does, um, we can hit approach right there. 
Um, these lines over here usually mean airspace, so we might do some handoff things here. The problem will be they might tell us to go up and down and up and down, so we'll just have to ignore that and shoot for 3,400. So anyway, 3,400 feet. Um, let's run that down to 3,000. So a takeaway five, a takeaway three is five. So we have to come down 15,000 feet and a thousand feet per minute will be 15 minutes. Well, we're speeding up now, so we need to do more than a thousand feet per minute because that's less than 15 minutes. So let's do 1,500 feet per minute, bring back the throttles. When we get to about 10,000 feet, we will slow down to 210 knots. Is that what it said, 210? Yep. Otherwise, um, simple as that. So what do we need to do? Um, barometer, because they're below 18,000 feet, they're going to give us one, so we'll hit the B key, and that's what it is. We have our winds, and we have the appropriate runway so far. Um, barometer set landing lights at 10 grand. Let's turn them on now. And what else do we need to do? Um, we can do the dimmer switch now. It's a little early, but that's okay. Um, my wife is taking a nap anyway. Remember, it's a date. It's a date flight. Let's see here. Um, weather. Kind of got it. We got the brown line lights on, dimmer switch on, the nurse's separator on, in case we come in through the clouds. That'll bring down our power, though, so you got to be careful about that. Gear down and flaps down when it's time. That's it. Follow ATC's instructions. Gear down, flap down. So when we get to 10,000 feet, I'll bring the speed back to 210. There's our lake up there. And then I will adjust the rate of descent accordingly so that we end up 3,400 feet in 10 minutes. All right, um, about a minute or two of sightseeing for you. I'm gonna maintain stuff and I'll be right back. below the clouds now, so we'll turn off the inertia separator, give us a power back too. Uh, let's see, it's getting kind of turbulent, but that's okay, we like it that way. Let's zoom in another notch, and let's start slowing down to our 210 knots, as instructed, gradually, and then I'm very curious how the RNAV is going to work, because sometimes it works, and you hit approach, and other times it doesn't. Uh, no further instructions from ATC yet. We're just going to hang out here and keep going. And so far, even though I've been going as fast as this plane will go, um, I'm already two minutes over my flight time. And we haven't even done our approach yet. So I don't understand where these times come from. Because it always takes me way, well, I don't want to say way more. It depends on the flight. But it always takes me longer than it's supposed to. I don't know. I'm not complaining, I'm just confused a little bit. Alrighty, let's see. Looks like there's some train up there, isn't it? But we don't have to worry about it, because we're landing like right here somewhere. We're coming out and landing like right there. So we don't have to worry about the train. But if we do, it's um 2,300 feet, I think. So we should be good. Uh, I don't see the runway yet. Maybe it's further out here somewhere. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, we're staying below 210, we're being obedient, coming down at 800 feet per minute, we've got 2,000 feet to go, just over 2 minutes, so we might bump that up to 900 feet per minute, we'll see. Still too early for flaps, still too early for gear, but it's never too early to look around, it's too late to look around sometimes, we've had that problem, but um, weird, I've been looking out this window for half the flight, I did not notice this thing sticking up. That's not like a spoiler, is it? This doesn't have spoilers as far as I know. Looking good from the outside too. I'm assuming we're gonna land between those hills. We don't need to worry about them. Um, but for this particular scenery, it actually looks better if you're in the cockpit looking out. Remember we talked about that a lot where um, the scenery resolution 
and how it's done is different in different parts of the world. Sometimes it's satellite imagery, sometimes it's actually planes flying overhead at different resolutions. So sometimes it looks better far away, sometimes it's fine up close. In this particular instance, it looks terrible. Oh, they're talking to us. We'll read it in a second. Sometimes it looks terrible from the outside like it does right now. Sometimes it looks fine from the outside. Anyway, what does this say? Acknowledge. Okay. What was I acknowledging? Oh, they're handing me off. Okay, they're done with me. So we're going to let the computer fly us. So we need to get down to 2300, I think. Now we're on our own. So we're going to tune in traffic. We're going to announce position. Right? Yankee Alpha Romeo Ball. Yep. Traffic Turtle Swap Tango Sierra 410514 miles okay. northeast inbound our NAS So now we have to um, go back down here because ATC is done with us now. So we got to get down to 2900 feet by Glyphon. 2390, I should say. 2390 by Glyphon. Um, so let's get this ready to go here. So here we go. We're going to hurry up now and then we're going to wait. So we're going to do 2300. And then we're just going to wait till there and then come down. We have to come down 1,100 feet. We'll see what the time is to get our descent rate. Let's keep our speed where it is. Too early for flaps, too early for gear. We'll do that on our long final. Um, there we go. Yep. And then we're going to... Hopefully everything's going to be okay. There's a lot of train turbulence. Holy cow. Looks good. I don't want to look outside, though, because... Um, yeah, so there's runway right there. It looks worse from the outside. So here we go. 2300 we on. How long we get there? Oh gosh. Less than a minute basically. So that's going to be vertical speed. Um, 1100 feet per minute I guess. I can't stay on there to click on it. 11 and then um, we have that. Let's hit approach now. We have our glide slope. Um, I think it's not going to turn green for this one, because it's RNAV. It's turned green for me before. Um, I could hit this and do... Nope, no, nope, bad idea. Okay, hit approach again, because I screwed it all up. That's fine. Hit vertical speed, I screwed everything up. Nav, approach. Okay, approach takes not vertical guidance, because it's going to look for this. Yep. It's going to look for the glide. So, okay, it's making sense now. We are going to hand find a moment. I just want to see what the computer will do for us. Well, keep our speed down. You're coming down. All right, that's our final. Let's announce our final. There we go. Yankee Alfa Romeo Golf Traffic Turtle Sook Tango Sierra 4105 is on final runway 19er to land. And we have a really nice, strong crosswind. Yuck. It's almost a little tailwind, too. Ooh, so the wind changed, and it probably would have been best to do the other runway now. See how this is um, coming at us. Almost like a tailwind. Yeah, whatever. It's negligible, but anyway. All right, 2300, it blew right below 2300. It's below the glide slope, so approach is not working. Because see, it's below glide slope, and it's... um. 2300 so what we could do is undo it all make the plane come up and then capture closer but we're not going to so um because usually what will happen here we go is um you need to capture this glide slope with approach at a certain time like when it's moving but it's always we've always been below it so either it's not working or i missed something but it's okay because i want to hand fly it in anyway and we would normally by now anyway i just wanted to see if it would work and it has worked before I do know what I'm doing and that it has worked before, but whatever. So here we go, strong crosswind from the left. Like I said, kind of a tailwind, right? Because we're facing 995 degrees and it's coming from 99 or something, so whatever. It's fine. We'll just deal with it. All right, here we go. Um, but I do promise you, when I set up the flight, it was best to use this runway. I promise you that. All right, let's go. Turn up my personal volume so I can hear things. And completely visual at this point. 
we've broken away from our nav, that's fine. And for a set of flaps, I think we get two sets here, right? Two sets plus reversers. So make you float like it should. And second set of flaps. Gears already down. Landing lights are on. Cabin is dimmed. Everything is ready to go. Yeah, still says we're below glide slope, and there's no way we're below glide slope right now. So I don't know what's going on. Doesn't matter. Okie dokie. Here we go. Oh, it's looking really pretty though. I really want to look outside. I really want to look outside because as we get closer to the ground and the trees render in, look at that. Look out the left window. It's amazing. Okay. I see what happened when I looked out the window. Now we're all screwed up. This wind is insane. Oh my gosh. This is one of the most difficult landings I've done in a long time. Again, I do not have a camera on my yoke, pedals, or myself, so you can't really see all the work I'm putting into this. So it looks smooth to you. That means it's going okay. But this is a lot of freaking work. This is exhausting. We're going to come in right above the stall. We'll let ground effects take over. Come on. Come on. And here we go. Let ground effects take over. There's a ground effect right there. Smooth as silk. Come on. Smooth as silk. And those get that wind. Reversers. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. There we go. Reversers off. Okay, I have to recover from that one. Um, as soon as we touch down and I relax the controls, because you know I had all the controls doing things as a crosswind. As soon as we touch down and I started relaxing the controls, the wind just took us because I was compensating and then bam, into the wind we went. So that was pretty intense at that end. That's okay. The nose wheel came down a little harder than it wanted, but it was crosswind landing with a very strong crosswind. So you do want to plant that thing down as soon as you can. Flaps are already up, by the way. I just did that as soon as I touched down. Flaps started coming up. Um, but we landed centered. That's awesome. So we're going to do now. We are going to find our way out of here. So if we can do this and zoom in, I don't think it really matters where we go. All right, so let's see here. Let's do taxi lights, pulse, nav, dimmer. All that is good. Um, we're going to turn off right about here. We can stop our timer as well. That's the primary timers. Hour 59, basically two hours. So 20 minutes longer than it was supposed to, of course, because that's how my luck is. All right, let's get this thing off. Is this a taxiway here? Or does this not have any taxiways? It's almost like that's the satellite taxiway when the satellite imagery is not real. Hmm. I'm going to go this way anyway. We do have a flight coming up. Don't know when it's going to be. And we're actually going to look for an airport that isn't in the sim. This is not. No. What is this? I think this is the taxiway from the satellite image. It's not in the sim. Anyway, we do have a flight coming up where we are going to actually look for an airport that is not in the sim. But we are going to look for it via the satellite or airplane aerial imagery to try to find it and land on it. That's going to be fun. That should be pretty fun. Um, let's just go over here. I guess we can announce clear runway. Yankee Alpha Romeo oh, Golf, traffic turtle, Tango, Sierra. Yeah. Is clear of the I'm runway. pretty confident this exists in real life. And this is the satellite, or the aerial imagery we're actually taxiing on. Awesome. Look at that house back there. That is cool. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. That's where my wife and I are going to have our date. We rented a cabin in the middle of nowhere, apparently. And that's where our date's going to be. Yeah, stop beeping at me. Alrighty, we'll shut this down to the point of where the sim will stop us. So we did all the lights and everything. Oxygen switch can come off now. And flaps confirm flaps up. They already are. All right, parking brake set. Strobe lights can now come off. And fuel main, fuel selector to manual. AP trims off. Bleed off. I think that was down here. Um, conditioners cut back or throttle or um, what do they call it? Props back. Conditioners back. Inertia separator confirm off. All icing switches off. Okie dokie. Oh, I had the ice light on. Whoops. Auxiliary pump off. Crash lever down. And there we go. Going to end our flight that way for us. 
Interesting how this is three minutes less than, or, or I guess he did start her timer a little early. But anyway, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the flight. I certainly did. That was pretty long, but the scenery was worth it. I know I'm doing a lot of IFR stuff, but that's because I usually, I haven't done IFR stuff in 10 years of flight sim. So I'm going to do a bunch more till I get sick of it. And we're sneaking some VFR stuff, of course, since that's what we normally do is a VFR GA. So what you've been watching the past couple of videos isn't normal. I'm just enjoying it, though. And we'll do more of it. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time.